Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have Nicole Mitchell. She is a pastor turned stripper turned life coach. I'm really excited to hear her story because I know as little about it as you probably do. So I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation. And Nicole, I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to connect with you and have this conversation. So I guess, let tell us your story. How did you end up where you are today? Yeah. So for my background, I grew up in the church, was raised Baptist, um, identified strongly as a Christian my entire life, and got to the point where my dream to become a pastor came true. And even for that, that was a big radical kind of rebellious thing for me to do because in the denomination I was raised in, women are not allowed to be leaders, much less pastors. So for me to go on to become one um, was a, was pretty scandalous. So you can get an idea of how my people responded to me doing the work that I'm doing now if they thought me becoming a pastor was scandalous. Um, and then a few years ago, I kind of got disillusioned with the church, with the religion, with the whole behind the scenes that I became involved with and aware of as I rose up in ranks at my church. And eventually had to choose between doing this thing I thought I wanted to do versus being who I felt I was being called to be. And eventually just walked away from everything. Kind of like Elsa, I stepped into the unknown. I followed the unknown, that whisper inside of me and had no idea where that would lead me. Had no intention of getting involved in the adult industry. I just was trying to figure out who I was and what I wanted to be be and do with my life. And eventually led to now making... um, a lot of money in the adult industry on OnlyFans and absolutely loving it and feeling like I'm living my most authentic truth more than ever before. So, I mean, that's a pretty big shift. And it sounds like it started with you being disillusioned with the church before you, it wasn't like you were like, okay, church sex work. It sounded like there was a period of time between the two where you were just trying to figure out where you wanted to go. So can you tell us maybe a little bit more about your background, about your time in the church, what some of the issues you saw were there, maybe what some of the benefits were, like, you know, the internal struggle that you that you had? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, my story makes it sound like I quit church yesterday and started doing my work, my adult work the next day. And it wasn't that simple. It was a lot more drawn out. It was a um, about a two year process between leaving the church and getting involved with my um, OnlyFans work. And really, the biggest catalyst was realizing my queerness. I always thought I was straight my whole life. And this is part of me trying so hard to be that good little girl, that good Christian girl, that good Christian woman, that good Christian wife, and trying to fit myself inside that mold, inside that box. And The older I got, I think the more in touch we'd become with ourselves. And I realized in 2016 that I wasn't straight. I didn't know what I was. I didn't know if I was gay. I didn't know if I was bi. I just knew I wasn't straight. And eventually, as I came to terms with my sexuality, that was a huge shift saying, if I don't even know my own sexuality in my mid-30s, what else do I think I know about myself that I'm totally wrong on? And so that's what like that two-year journey um, was for me when I left the church was to like figure out how much what I believe is what I actually believe versus what was put on me and I was indoctrinated to believe. And so a lot of it was an unlearning, unpacking, kind of deconstructing my entire worldview, beliefs, values, and allowing my truth to emerge and all of that. And it was really scary because I was leaving everything I knew. I was leaving my church. I was leaving my community. I was leaving my family norms. I was leaving what was considered acceptable for the chance of discovering who I really was and cried a lot, lost a lot of important people in my life. Um, But it's brought me to a place where I feel like I'm no longer hiding. I'm no longer pretending. I'm no longer um, a smaller version of who I am. I feel fully unleashed, unfiltered, uncensored. And I feel so incredible and so grateful. And that's what drew drew me to you and your podcast is like you're the pot your podcast title is like, yes, this is what I'm all about. People living unfiltered and living their truth and finding that it is so worth it. Yeah. A lot of guests that I have had on often talk about coming from a past where 
they had to disentangle themselves with a lot of like sense of shame around sex and around nudity and how their journey into the adult industry was so much more than just, you know, a changing of career, but was really about like finding themselves, getting in touch with their sexuality, in touch with their bodies and in touch with like who they were as a person. And it's so interesting how sex can be a vehicle to finding out like who we really are, which is something that I think a lot of people don't really expect. But, you know, sex is a really important driving factor in like kind of everything that human beings do, you know? I mean, we're we're genetically engineered to procreate, right? So it's like a big part of us and whether or not your life is about like suppressing your sexuality, which a lot of people do live in that existence, um, or embracing and exploring your sexuality and obviously like all the in-betweens, like it's, it's always going to be like a strong factor in your life. It just depends on which way you allow it to go. So how do you think that it has changed you as a person? Sex or the work that yeah, like just fine. I would say like getting in touch with your sexuality and like being being free to explore it and being um, free to you know find become more in tune with your body. It changed everything for the better. Um, I don't think I realized how much energy it took to suppress my sexuality and to try to be this muted version of myself. And it's like this interesting dance when you're raised, probably just in America, but especially in the religious community of like, you're supposed to be pretty, but not sexy. You should be like kind of alluring, but not too overt about it. Like this arbitrary line and you don't know you've crossed it until you're like attacked for it. So it's always trying to find this line of like, be desirable, like take good care of your body. You have to be desirable for your husband and like look good, but also not look too good that you cause other men to stumble. Like it was this crazy, like mind game I felt like in the church um, and I was so terrified of letting myself look good for anyone else or letting myself receive compliments or intentionally going out of my, my way to be sexy, w- to wear a sexy outfit or do a boudoir shoot. Um, and so in that journey of coming home to myself, I leaned into the possibility that maybe my sexuality is a good thing and it doesn't have to be feared. And the more I leaned into that possibility, the more I experienced that and the more I wanted that. And so now I've reached a point in my life where I feel like I've fully embraced my sexuality. I feel so safe in it. I feel at home with it. I feel really good and clean about it. I feel excited that I get like bless other people with amazing experiences and content from someone who's so embodied and grounded and deeply cares for other people not only has it healed my life, I feel like it has healed my clients' lives. It's helped heal my fans' lives who see that you can be both. You can be both a model and a mother. You can be sexy and be taken seriously. You can be risque and be respected. And it's just this wholeness, this goodness of being human, being a sexual being, and that you can use all that energy to up-level and transform your life for the better or to fear and control and censor as much as possible. And I'm so glad I finally went the other way with it. Isn't it so interesting how, you know, this duality of like the feminine is so controversial. And just like you said, I mean, you know, we get so much like, okay, if you're sexy, then that's like your only worth, right? You can't have any of these other attributes. You know, you can't be intelligent. You can't be a businesswoman. You can't be powerful. You can't be a mother. You know, it's like, you have to be one or the other. It's like society has such a hard time accepting the fact that a woman couldn't, you know, because yeah, you're sexy, but you're also other things too. I mean, everybody is more than just one thing. And so it's, it's really wonderful to talk to people who are in sex work and kind of talk about all of their other attributes. And just, I love to explore and show the world, like how women have so many different things to offer that you're not just one thing. Yes. I love that so much. And it's why I live a very like public life. I'm super active in my Instagram stories. Even in my OnlyFans page, I talk about like, I just took my kids on an amazing week long spring break and, and my fans just eat it up. Cause I think there is this hunger, this collective hunger for ourselves, for us as individuals to be fully expressed, fully unleashed, seen as a full 
multifaceted human and also see that in others. And I feel like by me leading that way, by refusing to be boxed or pigeonholed or labeled as one thing, it's showing others what is possible and it's giving them permission to maybe come out with their truth. And so inside my OnlyFans, we have super sexy content, of course, but we also have like really deep conversations around sexuality, freedom, expression, honoring that truth within you, not letting society, family, religion dictate who you get to be. And it is the most life-giving thing I'm honored to be part of. And that's the wonderful draw. And I think the popularity of platforms like OnlyFans is that it shows that the public really does have this, this desire and hunger for the authentic. Like you said, for a real connection with people, it's not about just being a figure head of sexuality. You know, I mean, I've been in the adult industry for 22 years and obviously I was around before these personal content platforms ever took effect were ever like had the foothold in the industry that they have now. So, you know, back when I started, you were this kind of picture perfect, like vivid box cover girl. And, you know, you always had your hair and makeup done and you would like wind in your hair. Your hair was always blowing in the wind and you were this very unattainable thing. Right. And fans would only get to meet you if they went and saw you feature dance you know, and again, you're up on a stage and they're back in the audience and they get to meet you for a second and get a signed Polaroid and a picture. And that's it. That's the only interaction they have with you. And now people can really talk to you on a one-to-one basis, like all the time on whether you're a cam model or whether you have an OnlyFans or a private Snapchat or whatever it is. And, and sex workers have seen this huge surge in you know, their popularity and their income. And I think it really does speak to just that basic human desire to have a connection. And it goes to show that your fans, yes, they think you're sexy and and yes, they, I'm I'm sure they masturbate to your content, but they also want to get to know you as a person. So like there's a whole other level to that, which never existed before. I love, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's so true. And I think that's what gives me so much excitement for like current day and future content creators, because the, that pressure to be this perfect image is so like far gone. You can still buy into that and think that's required. Um, but I'm always like teaching my clients who like want to be more self-expressed and like create content, whether it's just for Instagram or for their private platforms that like you being your authentic self and showing you as a real person is the most desirable thing. And it's a constant reminder to me when I started doing modeling, I only posted those picture perfect photos, right? And it wasn't as I got to know my community more and felt like the desire for realness that I started sharing like like selfies I would take. And they tend to be my most like most liked, most engaged content, both on Instagram and OnlyFans, because there is there is that desire to like, are you a real person? And if you are, they want to be like they want to be part of that. And so I get excited because you get to be your real self and then you can make as much money as you want because now you are in control of what you want to create, when you want to create, how you want to create, how much you want to charge. And it just makes it so much easier for the average person, the average creator. Yeah. I mean, not to turn this conversation to me and my only fans, but I'm just going to do it real quick because you talked about that authenticity and about, you know, fans really connecting with you as a human, as a human being. And, um, you know, most of my listeners know I had a baby six months ago and I have not bounced back to my pre baby weight as quickly as I would like. I'm still like 25 pounds over my pre baby weight. And, you know, I told myself, like, I'm not going to do any more pictures for my OnlyFans until I get back to my pre-baby weight. And, you know, is like time was ticking by and my fans are like, hey, like, I know you had just had a baby, but like, we'd love to see you. You know, we think you're beautiful. And I was like, oh, OK, like, here's some pictures of me and like my belly hasn't gone all the way down. And like, there you go. Ew. And everyone was like, I love it. And you look amazing. You look beautiful. And it's been such a bizarre experience But having an OnlyFans and having people, I'm making like just as much money as I was before. You know, people are still paying for my content. I have even more subscribers now. I post pictures of me with fucking no makeup on right out of the shower and they love it. And I never thought 
that I would gain the self-confidence and the love for the body that I thought that I would hate through OnlyFans. Like who would have thought that that would have helped me come to terms with my body issues that I've been struggling with my whole life? You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like totally there yet where I'm like super confident in how I look now, but it's definitely helped me shift my perspective. And I've started having these thoughts lately rather than like, oh God, you need to like lose these 25 pounds and you better, you know, get on the Peloton for another 20 minutes and don't eat that. I started to shift my thoughts toward like, what if you stayed this size and what if you were happy with it? Like, what if you remain the way you are now and like that was okay and you still loved yourself? Like, what would that look like? And that is something that I would have never considered before until I got the outpouring of support from my fans. And I feel like I might cry for a second and that's embarrassing. That is amazing. Like, this is what I'm talking about. This is how sacred our OnlyFans containers or whatever platform you have. It is so much more than just posting sexy content. You are building a community. You're like having this real connection. You're taking this brave risk of exposing yourself with no makeup, postpartum, and experiencing love for it. Like, that is so deep and healing and transformative. That's worth crying over. And it's my wish for more people to experience that. So that just like delights me to no end and just shows like how much deeper and more meaningful I think our work is than what can be assumed just by surface appearance or people's just initial reactions or judgments. So thank you for sharing that. That's so beautiful. Thank you. No, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been really amazing. So I love to, to hear stories like yours where, you know, you went through the same kind of transformative process where, you know, you are learning to love yourself as you are. And like, who would have thought that like sex work would have brought you to that place, you know, cause most people are convinced that sex work is what destroys you mentally and emotionally and, you know, sends you spiraling down into some, um, black hole that you'll never crawl out of. Yes. I love like since doing my sex work, I am way more clear on my boundaries, on my values, what feels right and comfortable for me, how to speak up for myself, the kind of community rules or guidelines I have for my space, like way more so than before my sex work. And so I'm always like telling people, this doesn't ruin you. Like this imp- it can empower you. And this is why when I have other new only fan models come to me like i'm saying get online and show my pussy right away because it's the only way to make money i'm like whoa 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 slow down let's get clear on like what feels right for you what feels good to you let's get clear in your boundaries on your values what's important to you because just throwing yourself on the internet because that's what they think you should do isn't good for anyone and so now that i'm where i am i feel like i am a way healthier human because of my work than I ever was before. And that's a message I hope continues to spread to the masses. Yeah. And that's such a great point because so for, for people who might get too excited and go join my only fans thinking that they're going to see, I I'm very tame. I only do playboy style. I don't do even do like open leg. Like, and I know people think that's crazy because I shoot porn. So people are like, well, why aren't you doing porn? Because you shoot porn. And it's like, clearly I have nothing against it and I have nothing against people who shoot it. And I admire them for being able to put themselves out in that way, but it's just not for me. You know, it's just not, it's just not for me. I'm more of like a behind the scenes person than in front of the scenes person. So me modeling nude kind of helped me like explore, you know, my sexuality and my husband like shoots all my pictures. So, you know, that kind of helped with our sex life, but you know, I, I do, I definitely have my boundaries and, And actually this kind of relates to a question I wanted to ask you because, you know, we only, I think that these personal content platforms, it's the first time that it's really allowed performers and creators to have the control over their career 
that just didn't exist before. So you really can set your boundaries and you can really stick to them because you don't have an agent. You don't have a producer. You don't have somebody saying, Oh, eh, you gotta do gang bangs. Otherwise you're never going to make any money, you know, and the work like dries up because you've done all your solo girl work and there's nothing left. So do you think that you would have gone into sex work if you didn't have the control that you do through personal content creation? That's a great question. And real quick, I want to say, I love that you mentioned that you shoot porn, but you don't yourself create porn for your site because I think it shows that multifaceted to being a human. Same thing. I create my content, but I don't watch porn. And mm-hmm. people like are like, what, how do you create what people would call porn and not watch it? And it's like, that's just who I am. Like, I don't know. It's just, I love creating, but it, that's not something I don't consume and I'm not against it. So I just love that you said that. And like, it just shows like how like complicated we get to be as human beings and we don't have to be this clear cut, um, easily assumed person. We get to be as multidimensional as we want to be. I'm so glad you said that. Um, okay. Now I have to repeat your question because I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, would I have gotten, would I have gotten into, um, sex work if I didn't have like kind of full control over it all? That's a really good question. I probably not. I think that's the beauty of OnlyFans and different private sites. It's a great gateway. It's a great way to like get into the industry and kind of tiptoe around and get a feel for what do you feel comfortable with? What do you want to create? What are you not okay with creating? Um, what kind of money do you want to charge for it? And then get a feel for that. And then from there, decide if you want something more. If you want to go and have an agent or be part of these bigger companies, or do you want to just kind of keep it your own thing? And I think being someone who... How do I say this? I don't want to say I'm a really controlling person, but I have really strong preferences on how I want to do things that I think I really enjoy the freedom and autonomy of having my own site and making all the decisions for me, my brand and my business and find myself very content with where I am right now because of that. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Nicole's uh, life coaching career and also what it's like to be a sex worker and a parent. So stick around. We'll be right back. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q&As where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. All right, guys, we are back. So Nicole, I know that you, you know, obviously you were a pastor and then you moved into sex work. We didn't really get into the specifics of how that came about. Um, So can you tell us like kind of what your first steps were dipping your toe into the sex work industry and then kind of maybe talk about what your advice would be for other people who are considering the same path? Oh, this is so good. Okay. I'm so glad we're talking about this. So I started by wanting to do modeling. I just wanted to kind of be an Instagram model. I've wanted to model since I was a little girl and I don't meet any of the requirements. I'm too short. I'm not, I'm not the weight. I'm not the age, but I still had this desire. And this is again, one of the, one of the benefits of being alive today is and having platforms like Instagram is 
a lot of those old rules about what you should look like and this and that just aren't required anymore. And so I lined up a shoot with a, a fine art nude photographer and did that. And it was transformative. That was my first all nude shoot. And I remembered like thinking like I've never felt more holy or sacred in my life and wanted more of that. And the practical way I've gone about that, because I still do a lot of um, model shoots, is I do my homework on all photographers or videographers before I ever work with them. And so I will reach out to a minimum of three models that that photographer or videographer has worked with and just check like, hey, I see you did a shoot with so-and-so. We're looking at doing a shoot together, but I want to check with you and see how your experience was with them. Did you feel safe? Was that person respectful? Um, do, would you recommend shooting with them? If you're able to get back to me, that would be amazing. Cool. And 99.9% of the time, all the models get back to me, whether they have a thousand followers or over a million followers, the model community is really connected and really looks out for each other. And they are very honest. Like he's the best. I've shot with him three times. You're going to love it. Or total scumbag, stay away, screwed me over, blah, blah, blah. And the reason I do three is I want to make sure I'm getting like an accurate consensus and not just like a one-off experience. Um, so because of that, I've had a phenomenal modeling career because I only work with the best and honest and safe photographers and videographers because my well-being is so important to me. My safety is so important to me. My experience is important to me. If I have bad, enough bad experiences, something in me is going to shut down and be afraid to do a shoot or to express myself. So do your homework, reach out to models. And you do that by going to that photographer's um, Instagram page because they should be tagging the models. If they are not tagging the models, that's a red flag. Um, and then you obviously click on their name, send them that DM and wait to hear back for them. Um, you know, I just quickly, I just want to say, I'm so glad that you say that because I absolutely agree with you. And myself as a professional photographer and producer would give the same advice. And when I actually, if I reach out to a girl that I want to shoot, I encourage them to get references on me because I am confident in my reputation. And I know that I am good to the people that I shoot. And then I am honest and I create a safe environment. So I will tell girls like, Feel free, literally feel free to contact anybody I've shot ever. Like, go for it. And there, okay, yes, there's maybe like two people like I've had bad experiences with and, you know, um, just personal differences. But, uh, you know, I've never had put anybody in danger, made anybody feel unsafe on set or anything like that. But yeah, no, I encourage them. I'm like, absolutely reach out to anybody like get your references on me, check me out because I'm confident that you're going to only hear good things about me and you're going to want to work with me. So I'm, I'm glad that you said that because I, I tell girls it's a huge red flag if girls ask for referrals and a photographer doesn't want to give them or acts like offended, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, how dare you question me? You know, don't you know who I am? Anybody who comes back at you with that kind of attitude is somebody that you want to avoid at all costs. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so good. And it's insane. Like I want, I know before video or videographers or photographers shoot me, I hope they're doing my home, their homework on me. Like I want, I want it to be the best experience for everyone. You never have to settle or compromise to get what you want. That's a huge thing for me as a, for myself or for my clients is don't compromise. You can find the right team, the right photographer, the right videographer that you're like lit up to, to shoot with, to create with, and you don't have to feel yucky or gross or unsafe or, or ashamed or judged or whatever to get amazing content or to do what you want to do. Don't settle. The right people are out there for you. Agreed. Absolutely. Okay. So you were modeling and how did you end up where you are now from there? Yes. So I'm always annoyed. I think all of us are annoyed with um, Instagram's censorship. They really limit the kind of content you can post on Instagram. They have double standards. If you're more famous or sexier or skinnier, your thing flies than if you're not. Um, or a lot of my male photographer friends, all their photos are kept up, but my photos are taken down. It's the exact same photo. Um, but the perk of that is it gives you the excuse to create your own private website. So these photos, like I post on my OnlyFans, I would happily post on Instagram, but because they won't let me, I now get to make money off, off of it. 
it's a win-win. So I had all these sexy photos from my photo shoots, but also the ones I've been taking at home and nowhere to share them. And I had always, there was something in me that's always been super sexual. Um, ever since I was in middle school, I've wanted to be a stripper. And I don't know where that idea came from because I was raised super religious in a very super controlled environment. So I wasn't watching those kind of movies. I didn't have any friends who knew what that was like, but something in me always wanted that. And so years ago, right after I had my third kid, I had like my big breastfeeding boobs and I just felt super sexy and empowered. And I had one of my girlfriends to snap a bunch of nude photos of me and I had nowhere to share them. So finally, I, after getting more content like that through my shoots, I was like, I'm just going to create an OnlyFans page to post all these gorgeous photos and to kind of figure out what level I'm, I feel comfortable creating at. And so it was very private, very small. I only had like one or two fans in the beginning for a while because I wasn't like blasting it for everyone to know about because I was still pretty timid um, and like scared of how my people were going to react at, after having come out of the church. And that's where I posted it. And I felt so good. It felt so good to finally have a place where I could post these gorgeous works of art, have people like it. And then I got more confident. And then I started sharing more about my social media. I wrote a whole post about it, kind of warning my religious people. Hey, I'm now doing this thing. You can unfollow or unfriend me right now if you don't like it. Um, but this is what I feel called to. And I'm really, really excited. And then from there, I just started sharing more about it. And I kind of I started only topless and eventually like, worked my way to wherever I feel comfortable. And it's I've now had it for over a year and a half. And I do um, pretty explicit content now. But it's all been based on my, at my pace, at my level, at what feels comfortable for me. And my fans have been so supportive and they love it. This is another reason why I think only fans or sites like that are so powerful is you're not just, it's not purely transactional. Here's a sexy photo and you pay me to me. I'm like inviting you on a journey and they get to go back and see my very first photos of like kind of shy, timid, like new to this kind of girl to like fully empowered, fully expressed, knows what she wants, will not sell up, settle for anything less. And they get to, and I'm still in the middle of my journey. So they're continually seeing me evolve and expand and up level. And you just don't get that anywhere else. You don't get that even just on Instagram or um, free porn sites. And you're getting this invitation to like intimate glimpse into my life or other creators' lives. And it's a really cool thing. And isn't it so, <laughs> it's so much nicer to, to interact with people on these paid platforms. Um, you know, a lot of girls will say like, look, I'm not going to answer my Instagram or my Twitter DMs. You want to talk to me, you join my only fans. And it's true because, you know, I mean, girls in this industry, you know, sex workers experience so much trolling, you know, people say horrible things about you online. I mean, Riley Reed just the other day announced that she was engaged and the responses from her supposed fans was just horrific. You know, it was like, oh, you're not allowed to have like a normal love life. You're not allowed to get married. You're not allowed to be happy. Like you must only be Riley Reed, the porn star and like just have sex for money. And that's, that's all that you're worth in life. And so, you know, you get that kind of feedback on, you know, Instagram, on Twitter, but when you go to your OnlyFans, generally people who are willing to pay for your content aren't there to like say horrible things to you. So just the interaction with the fans is like a completely, it's a completely different experience. And of course, and I'm sure you've had this as well, you'll have some people that'll come in and they, I don't know, they want more from you and they try to push you or they're, they're rude about your boundaries, but those people fade away pretty quickly. But the, the support that you have from the people who are your true fans and who are with you on the journey, like you said, is, is really uh, something that's quite unique. It is. I love that you said that because like, I've had a couple of people come into my space, like I want more, this isn't worth the price. And I, I am so unattached to people's money. This is another good principle for any entrepreneur and especially if you're an OnlyFans creator because we think like if if I lose that fan I lose that money I don't have any interest in taking money from someone who doesn't want to be there or who is rude or snobbish to me so the, I've, I've had like three kind of rude fans in the past year and a half it's, it's so minimal and I'm always like hey I get it um this is my account I run it differently from any other model's account you are not required to be here you're welcome to be but this is how I do it. And I thank you for your patronage. 
Um, but if you want to leave, you can leave. Like I'm so untouched and it just frees you to not like be clingy. You, and again, you're not settling for a subpar fan when there's so many amazing humans and fans who love you for you, respect you for you. I just had a fan send me a gift for my five-year-old. Um, and he was like, I saw him picking flowers for you. And it meant so much to me that I went onto your Amazon wish list and I had to get that one toy on there for him that you put there. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like honoring like that mother side of me. And I'm glad you brought that thing about Riley, because if I feel like there's this pressure in the adult industry to always be seen as sexy, you can't reveal your personal life. You can't reveal your dating. You can't reveal you're engaged. You can't reveal you have a partner. Whereas I believe the opposite. I believe I'm just the more desirable, the more honest I am. And so when we put ourselves in this position of like, pretend I have no love life. And then also we get engaged or get married or whatever, it can like throw our audience off because we kind of set them up for that. So I, I'm always of the the belief or persuasion to my clients, like, I'd rather you err on the side of being your full self, not seeing it to air all your personal private details, but like you being partnered or dating or anything does not make you less desirable. It makes you real. And there's something attractive about that. And then secondly, when there's like a backlash like that, I often believe it's like a reflection of our own fears. We've swallowed this fear that if I come out engaged or married or I'm pregnant, my fans are going to be pissed at me. And like our, I think our, I believe our core beliefs are ultimately reflected in the world. And so if we can address that, it's safe for you to come out with whatever truth you have, you're pivoting in your career, you're now expecting, you are breaking up with your partner, you just hooked up with a new partner, whatever does not mean it has to cost you your fan base, cost you money, cost the love people have for you. It makes them love you more. And so I'm like so passionate about helping my clients identify core beliefs and core fears so we can release the ones that don't serve you and that don't set you up for success in the short term and long term. And then identify the ones that you, your values and beliefs that will serve you and support you and set you up. And so that you can continually have a better and better experience without having a huge dip in your income or a huge like negative reaction from your fan base because none of that's required. Yeah. I also really love the fact that like you getting into sex work seemed to propel you into the space where you can also have a career as a life coach, you know, where you can like the freedom and the self-exploration that sex work has allowed for you, you can kind of gift that to other people as well. And that's, I think that's really interesting. Yeah. I ha I had a fear because I was a life coach before I did sex work and I had a fear if I get into sex work, I'm going to lose business in my in my life coaching. I'm going to lose clients. And it's actually been the exact opposite. I'm getting clients and my business is growing because I do sex work. Because they mm -hmm. look at me and see that whole person. Wow, she's a mom and she does this? Or she like creates this kind of content and she's making a, a shit ton of money? Like She's not what I like thought she would be or what I would pigeonhole, pigeonhole her to be. I want that for myself. I want my version of that for myself. It's also been really cool to see how this thing I feel called to do and I love doing doesn't hinder any part of my life. It only amplifies it and improves it, including my life coaching business. Right. Now that's fantastic. All right, guys, we're going to take one last break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk to Nicole about being a parent and a sex worker at the same time. So Stick around. We'll be right back. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. Use code Holly to get 10 free gifts plus free shipping with any purchase. That's adameve.com. Use code Holly for 10 free gifts plus free shipping. We are back with Nicole. So Nicole, uh, you have mentioned a couple times that you are a parent as well as obviously being a sex worker. I love this topic because I'm a new parent. I am the daughter of people who work in the adult industry. My mother's Suze Randall, famous uh, erotic photographer and also a uh, uh, producer. She, she, her and my dad made some movies back in the late seventies, early eighties, which by the way are fucking hilarious. <laughs> You ever want to go back and watch my mom's old porn movies? They're so funny. I love them. <laughs> They're so funny. But yeah, so I was raised around the adult industry. So um, it's, you know, like a favorite topic of mine to talk to people about it because it's something that's familiar to me, but I know is 
is something that people are only starting to open up about now. You know, it was always like such a fear of how could I be a parent and a sex worker at the same time? They seem to be two things that would, you know, be at odds with each other, but it seems like you've really uh, been able to manage the two quite well. So what's your story? What's your secret? Um, How much do your kids know? All that. Yeah, I have three kids and they're pretty young. They're um, five, eight and 10. And I had a lot of fear going into that. I had a lot of fear leaving religion thinking, are my kids going to be mad at me? Are they going to wish I had kept them in a church? Will they feel like they're missing out on some form of community? Um, And I had similar fears getting into this work. Like, are they going to be ashamed of me? Are they going to be mad at me for embarrassing them with creating content like this on the internet? Like all the fears and questions you could ever think of, I've thought about them a million times more than any other person. Because I have certain old family members and friends be like, have you even thought this through? I'm like, more than you ever will because I'm their mom, because I care so deeply. Um, And I'm a very thoughtful person. I don't do anything before I've put usually way too much thought into it because I care so much about the long-term implications of anything that I do. Um, And so why it's part of why I'm so, it means so much to me to surround myself by other workers in the adult industry, such as yourself, who have children and help kind of normalize that for me and help like um, talk through some of my fears. I remember having a phone call with Kendra Lust several months back. She's a mom to a daughter around one of my daughter's ages. And I just like, how's that going? What's that like? Like, and she kind of just talked me through that and felt so comforting to have someone who's gone before me, um, who, who has way more years and experience in this than I do kind of coach me through that. And now that I am where I am, I feel like my, not only my sense of sexuality, but the sex work I do is so much healthier than the sex mindset I grew up with in the church. Like, I feel like the most toxic beliefs you can have about sexuality, sex, bodies can come from the kind of church I came from. And so I remember that in the big picture, like, I feel like I'm giving my kids a much better gift because we talk about consent. We talk about bodily autonomy. We talk about what's appropriate, not appropriate. We talk about kids doing kid things, adults do adult things. We're having all kinds of conversations and equipping them with tools that I was never equipped with as a kid growing up. I didn't learn about consent until five years into my marriage. I didn't know what that was. I did not know I had the right to say no, even to my husband, my then husband, we're now divorced. But like that blew my mind. And I was so angry that I was never taught consent as a kid that I didn't couldn't even employ that in my marriage. Um, so it's so important to me now as a mom to teach my kids these things. So they have these skills for a lifetime, for a dating relationship, for their work environment, for who they become, whatever they end up doing. These are life skills everybody needs. And I feel like my work has prepared me and helped me with that more than anything else in my life. Yeah. You know, one of the amazing things about being, about engaging in responsible sex work is how much communication is involved in it and how much we talk about consent and boundaries in a way that so many other people don't. So you find that people who work in the adult industry, not everybody, obviously, there's always exceptions, but um, often have really amazing communication skills and that can really foster healthy relationships. You know, I did a clubhouse discussion um, with uh, a bunch of women in the adult industry a few weeks ago, and Lotus Lane was one of the speakers, and she is a mother. And she just had some really, she brought up a really great point that I had never thought about before, basically saying that, like, how lucky are we to be involved in an industry that is so open-minded and embraces all different kinds of people, you know, gender fluid people, sexually fluid people, you know, the adult industry is really a place where like all the misfits of society can come together and, and really love each other for who we are. And there are so few other industries that embrace people in the way that we do and, you know, how lucky are we to, to work in an environment like that and, and pass those kinds of loving, accepting values onto our children. And she talked about how her child was non-binary and, you know, how that was an easy thing for her to understand and accept because there's so many non-binary people in the adult industry as well. And, you know, especially over these last few years, 
the adult industry used to not be so embracing and loving of different, uh, you know, gender identities, sexual identities, for sure. You know, like I said before, I've been in the adult industry for a long time, but there's been such a massive shift Mm -hmm. in the way that, you know, we see people. And I think that nothing, it hasn't shifted in the adult industry. It's shifted faster than in so many other industries. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I was just like, God, Lotus, what a great point. And yes, you know, and, and through this podcast, I've been able to, talk to and learn from so many different people who have different perspectives, different ways of loving other people, different ways of identifying themselves. And I feel like it's opened up my mind and my heart in such a way that it's made me a better person. And I feel really fortunate that I get to, you know, pass on what I've learned from my guests to my daughter. I love that. And you're so right. Because my hope is for my children as now and as they get older, that they know their mom will never judge them. I'm so open-minded and I care more about like your integrity and you like you feeling safe to express yourself to me and you taking care of your body and your sense of self and personhood as you go out in the world. And there's no shame here. Like, I feel like I'm raising my kids in a very shame-free sex positive um, home that I never had for myself and wish I'd always had. And so I'm so excited to give it to my children um, and hope they raise, raise up to be like healthy, thriving version of you. Like, I love that you're such living proof that you can be raised with parents in the adult industry and <laughs> love your parents' old porn videos. Like that's amazing. And just shows you like being in this environment doesn't automatically ruin anyone. It can actually be incredibly healing and empowering even for your children. Yeah. I mean, you know, the conversations that you know, we have sometimes, sometimes I step back and I just, you know, try to look at it from an outsider's perspective. I'm like, wow, we are a different and unique family. So I'm actually working on a documentary about my mom and we found a bunch of old pictures. You know, she was a nude model before she became a photographer. And, um, so we found a bunch of her old photos and, and my mom used to work at the Playboy Mansion and she used to go there with my dad and they used to go to like orgy parties and like they were swingers when they were younger. So they did all the you know, crazy stuff. And they're still together, you know, 50 Mm -hmm. years later. And, um, we found these like old Polaroids of like my parents at orgies. And it was just, I was like, this is gold. This is amazing. This is hilarious. You know, and like sitting down at the dinner table and be like, oh my God, you won't believe what we found. You know, and my dad was like so excited to see them and like relive his, you know, younger days. My mom was like kind of embarrassed, but also laughing. And, you know, these are typical conversations that we have, you know, that I can accept that the fact that my parents were these sexually liberated, you know, free spirited people in their youth, but then they were also wonderful, loving, devoted parents who read me a bedtime story every night, who spent their weekends with us, who, you know, insisted on good grades. I mean, you know, you can be all of those things. Yeah. Can I ask you, I mean, I'm sure there's a million things and you just listed some of them, but what is something you felt like they did right as parents that helped you become the healthiest, most empowered version of you? Um, That they believed in me and loved me like unconditionally and and taught me self-worth and taught me that I could do anything that I set my mind to and that I was worthy You know, I mean, you know, parents do ask me sometimes who, who work in the adult industry and who have kids, like, I'm so afraid of my children finding out what I do for a living and their opinion changing of me. And like, I feel that if you raise your children with like love and closeness and respect, your, your kids are going to love you no matter what. If you grew up loving your parents and, and they've cultivated, you know, this, this close relationship and this this support system, I don't think your children are going to suddenly turn on you if they find out that, you know, you have sex for a living. Like it's not that black and white, you know? So I just tell people, I'm just like, just love your children and raise them right. And they won't care what you do. Yeah. There's truth to that. Like if you're raising, like if you're open-minded and you're raising your kids to have an open mind and not be judgmental and not shame or blame or judge people, like then that's going to, I think, be even returned to you as they get older. And I think there's something important and powerful about having age appropriate conversations with our children. Oh, yeah. So like 
my kids don't obviously know exactly what I do. They know I'm a nude model. They know I'm a lingerie model. Um, and they, they've hear me do a lot of interviews. And so they've heard the terms pastor turned stripper. Um, they know they can ask me anything. I'm very um, open and honest with them for their age level. Um, and so, my, I, so again, I have another question for you. I'm just so curious for you who was raised in a home like this. Um, did you know what your parents were doing or at what age did you become aware of it? And did they talk to you about it? Did you discover it on your own? See, that's, see, that's the thing. Like they never hid it from me. So I don't ever remember it being like this moment where they were like, we have to tell you something, you know, you, we told you we were these things, but we're not, we're something else. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I remember like the earliest explanation to me of why. So for example, my parents actually, the guest house on our property was their office, right? So I wasn't really allowed in there because there was porn in there. And so they, they just told me, you know, mom and dad take photos and shoot movies for grownups. So this space is for grownups only. Um, it's for work and it's for grownups. So it's not for kids. And, you know, I was like, okay. It was like, you know, the same, I accepted that with the same level of like sharp knives are not for children, you know, like hot stoves are not for children. Like you're not old enough to like be around those things, but one day you will be. And and so that was my understanding from a young age. And look, like when you're a kid, you don't care what your parents do for a living. It's not interesting to you. You know, you care about like mm-hmm. the unicorn club and like the latest Barbie that came out. And you know what I mean? Like it's not important. So yeah, I don't remember. Like I just kind of always knew, but I didn't, it wasn't a big part of my life. You know, it wasn't a big part of my life was, just spending time with my parents and going to the beach on Sundays and, you know, having weekends and vacations. And I mean, I don't know. Family. Yeah. Just being a family. It wasn't about like what my parents did. It was just about being a family. So, and you know, my brother and my sister are uh, both really well-adjusted kids and they are not, they don't work in the adult industry at all, like completely different. Um, career paths. So, you know, for those people who are like, oh, well, yeah, you were raised, you know, in porn and now you work in porn, like that, you know, that doesn't have to be what happens. I mean, I found that the adult industry was the right place for me and it felt like it fit, but for my brother and my sister, they have completely different careers, but they, you know, were all extremely close and they love my parents and, um, they're not like ashamed of, of what they did for a living. It's just kind of like, I don't know. So mom and dad did for a living. I love that. And I, I think that's such an important thing you said when they didn't try to hide it from you or try to pretend they were something else. Cause I think right. that's where a lot of like the mess up can happen. It's like, wait, what you said you were a school teachers, but you actually do this. Like yeah. there's something about like being honest about what you are. And that's why I love, I have like magazines in my bedroom of me and lingerie. Um, and so like my kids have flipped through it and that's normal for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's not porn. It's like tasteful, but they're seeing like, oh, mommy's a model and mom like does this stuff. And I have like three ring lights right here in front of me. Like I do a lot of camera and video work. Yeah. And it's just something I'm not trying to pretend they don't do. And so I think when they get older and realize more of what I actually do, I think they'll have that kind of response that you had to your parents. It's really Yeah. I think, yeah, just make the transition make sense. I think the worst thing you can do is lie to your children. And, and like I said, tell them that you're one thing and they find out that, you know, and then it's like, they don't trust you. Totally. And that's the worst thing to do is to lose your children's trust. So Nicole, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. So good. Thank you. Thank you for being you and living so open and honestly and unfiltered and just making space for other people like me, both in the adult industry and those who are not to just be your truth self, true self. And I love how you just said, the adult industry just felt like the right fit for you. Like giving people permission to find what fits them and to do it and to not live in shame about it, to not lie about it. I just think the work you're doing is incredible. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad I found you. I found you because one of my fans and my only fans is like, you need to connect with Holly. Like her podcast, who she is, reminds me so much of you. And I'm so glad that that fan showed me who you were and that it led to this amazing conversation. So thank you so much. Oh my God. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Nicole, for, for being who you are and, you know, being your honest, true self. It's my show is only what it is because of guests like you. 
So really, I have to thank you. Oh my goodness, my honor. Thank you. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yes, come hang out. Um, you can go to my website, NicoleMitchell.com. Nicole spelled with a K, N-I-K-O-L-E. And I offer digital courses. I even have an OnlyFans training for people who want to know how to start and grow um, a really successful OnlyFans account. Um, I have all kinds of other life coaching courses. One, I teach one-on-one. I have a mastermind and all the social medias. Um, if you go to my website, it'll lead you to Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, but come say hi. I love meeting new people and being in community with like-minded humans. So come on over. And you guys, as always, can find me on the Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. If you want to support my show, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where I just started adding my fine art, photography, and video. So those are some bonus perks on top of all the other amazing stuff that you get when you join my Patreon. So thank you so much for listening. Nicole, again, thank you so much. And I will see you guys as always next week. <laughs>